Now, if there is one thing that I don't like about shooting on my cinema camera, it's actually shooting on a gimbal. Now, one-handed gimbal formats actually make a lot of sense for smaller cameras, but when I'm using a bigger camera like my Sony FX6, it doesn't really feel comfortable, and honestly, it just doesn't work out for me. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about a ring grip that I made for my Ronin RS2 to mount on my Sony FX6. Tilta did send me the basic ring grip if you're working with any of the gimbals from the DJI RS system. And to be completely honest, this new basic grip is actually a little bit of an upgrade. Now, in the previous version of the Tilta ring grip, you actually didn't get a control remote at all. You just had two handles, and essentially it was just a magnesium alloyed ring that you'd put your gimbal into without any control, which made it a little bit uncomfortable and also really hard to function with because you have no controls on the grips on the handles. Now, in the basic ring grip plus, you're actually going to get a remote control that's not only going to be able to give you your recording settings if you're doing camera control, but you also get the joystick and you can choose the different modes of your gimbal while using the side remote without having to go and touch the gimbal itself and press on those buttons. It also has connection points so you can connect accessories especially if you're trying to power the system itself or you actually need mounting points to power other accessories that you're going to have in your gimbal ring. Now there are two things that I need to mount on this gimbal ring first and that's going to be the power supply module and the V-mount battery plate. Now you are going to have to screw on these plates onto the connection points that are on the gimbal. But once you've done that, you can actually power your ring by V-mount batteries. And also you have a power module as well with cold shoes on it so you can mount other accessories and you can use different systems to power your accessories with either DTAP or USB. Now the gimbal that I'm gonna be using on this ring is gonna be the DJI RS2. I don't really see a need to upgrade to a new gimbal and there's probably gonna be new ones that are gonna come out in the future. And right now, I just don't see a point. This might be a throwback for some people, but I'm actually going to use the Raven Eye system. And I can control the pan tilt and the roll axis just by using my phone. Now in terms of actually mounting my camera on the DJI Ronin gimbal, Sony FX6 actually has to be stripped down by a little bit. You're gonna have to take off the side handle and the top handle as well. And when you take off the top handle, well, you don't really have audio. But we do have a workaround that you're gonna see later on in this video. Now in terms of actually powering the Sony FX6, I don't have the luxury of having a V-mount plate adapter that can go with it. So I'm just gonna use a stock battery instead. Now you can pick up bigger batteries on B&H or Amazon if you need more power for your Sony FX6, but for me, I'm shooting shorter shoes with gimbals, so using the stock battery is more than fine. Now you are gonna have to use a custom plate for your DJI Ronin gimbal in order to get your Sony FX6 on there. But you can pick one of these guys up and I'll leave a link in the description down below. However, if you still want to have some of the touch autofocusing features or you just want to be able to see the screen, you are still able to mount on the LCD monitor on the Sony FX6 to make sure that you can still see things. Now one thing that I've also done is I've used the iPhone mount and I've put it on the side of my Ronin RS2. And to be completely honest, it's to make Instagram reels. One piece of content that I do like making is behind the scenes content of the shoots that I go on. And it's a lot easier to actually just mount my iPhone onto my gimbal itself and then I can just record while I'm recording a clip. Now you might not be able to use your iPhone for force motion while it's on this mount, but you could also just connect it to somebody else's device and they can control the pan, tilt and roll while you're getting some clips for your Instagram or your TikTok or YouTube shorts because that's what we do now. Now obviously you have to connect your DJI Ronin gimbal by removing the pistol grip handle, but that's also where the battery is gonna be stored but the basic ring has a port where you could put the pistol grip battery inside of it and it could actually power your rig at the same time. Now the V-Man battery I will be using unsurprisingly is gonna be the FX Lion 2 battery so I don't necessarily need that much power. However, if you don't have a V-Man battery, you could still use that pistol grip handle in order to power the entire gimbal ring. Okay, so there is one problem with using the Raven 9, the fact that the HDMI cord doesn't reach up into the Sony FX6. You could still use force motion control, but you're not gonna get any signal via your iPhone. And this is where the Hollyland Mars 4K comes in. Because it can actually connect to multiple devices, more particularly one monitor and up to two iOS devices, I could use this in conjunction with my Hollyland Mars M1, and I could hand that off to a first AC so they could still see the image in 4K, and they could use a force motion control at the same time. But we're still gonna need some way to monitor our image. And I'm actually gonna be using the Atomos Ninja 5. Now, yes, you can get ProRes RAW using the Sony FX6, but that's not exactly what I wanna use it for. Because I'm gonna be using the Hollyland Mars 4K, I wanna make sure I have a monitor that has HDMI in and HDMI out. I could feed an HDMI signal in from my FX6 into the monitor, and I could feed the HDMI signal back out to the Mars 4K, so I can have the best of both worlds. I'm also gonna be using the Tilta Magic Arm in order to connect my monitor into my system itself. And what's cool about the power module is it does have quarter 20 threads, so you could actually mount different accessories onto it, especially if you're using a Magic Arm to connect your monitor to it. Now, last but not least, we're gonna need an audio workaround. Now, on the Sony FX6, once you remove the top 
top handle, it becomes a little bit tough to get audio. At least anything that's audible or even usable. But I have to give a shout out to Chris Brockhurst because he did find a workaround where you could use a DJI lavalier system in order to connect it to your Ninja 5 and you could actually set up the trigger to react to your camera once you press record. Now you are still going to have to sync things up in post, but this is an incredibly useful tool and an incredibly useful workaround that's not only going to be compact, but you're going to get some high quality audio, especially when you're using a gimbal rig with a camera like the FX6. All right, so with everything set up, this is the gimbal ring for the Sony FX6. It has all my accessories that I would need for shooting, and at the same time, it's a lot comfortable being able to use two hands instead of just one. Now, when you're holding a one-handed gimbal setup, even if you're using the little arm at the back, what ends up happening is both your hands are gonna be into your midpoint, which means that your shoulders on the side here are gonna be internally rotated, which might be actually why some people have really sore upper backs when working with a gimbal. Now, with using a ring setup, it's a little bit different because both your hands are spread out a little, which means you could pull your shoulder blades back and use a lot more back muscles in order to shoot on longer days, which will help you with your longevity because filmmaking is kind of hard. Oftentimes, even when you're shooting with different stabilization, it is a big load that's gonna be on your back and your shoulders. And no matter how strong you are, over time, you're gonna have wear and tear on your joints. Having a gimbal ring is not only going to give you the ability to have all of your accessories, but you're also going to have the ability to keep your back and your shoulders safe. All right, so the only thing I do have left over in terms of this entire kit is Tilt actually sent me a carrying case for the gimbal ring and actually all of my gimbal accessories. Now, this is something that I do recommend getting, especially when you want to carry only one bag instead of two to make sure that you have your gimbal, all the accessories you need, and the ring itself. This makes for an easy setup and teardown, and it has an overall lesser footprint, so it's one less thing you actually end up losing, and you still get to have all the parts that you need for your gimbal setup. That being said, that is my full kit, my full rig for the Tilta gimbal ring using the basic grip. Now, a special shout out to Tilta for actually sending me a lot of these parts. They did send me the ring and the carrying case. However, this video isn't sponsored, and I still got to say pretty much whatever I wanted. However, However, this was something I was going to buy anyways as I was looking for a setup that could save my back and I could start actually using gimbal shots again. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or at the very least you learned something. Yeah, there's more rigs coming up. And if you want to see more of those, they're going to be on either one of the two videos on the screen and I'll see you guys there. Peace.